Okay guys, don't forget today we've got a special job. We're off to frack the Prime Minister's house. Climate change campaigning threatens various vested interests, but six of the ten biggest companies in the world are oil and gas companies. So you're talking about not just a big vested interest, but the biggest vested interest in the world. Since 1968, the UK police have spied on at least 460 political groups. It has become apparent that some officers, acting undercover while seeking to infiltrate protest groups, entered into long-term intimate sexual relationships with women, which were abusive, deceitful, manipulative and wrong. That's the sort of thing you hear about in, you know, East Germany and China and, and Russia or wherever. Targets have included the Stephen Lawrence family, anti-racist campaigners, as well as environmental activists. The police have various different units spying on environmental campaigners. Then of course there's the security services at a kind of slightly higher level like MI5 and MI6. But also there's a large, uh, large number of corporate spies of um, private companies spying on climate activists on behalf of big polluters like energy companies or aviation companies. So uh, whilst it's a concern, the police are a bigger concern because they're just much better at it. If the police want to search your house, they have to apply for, to the courts for a search warrant and there is supposed to be some scrutiny of what you're, uh, you know, what you're supposed to have done. But with the undercover policemen, they actually moved into people's houses for as long as five years. Units have been systematically abusing women since 1968. An inquiry looking into the undercover tactics used by the police is set to start in mid-2016. But the police are refusing to reveal any further identities of these uh, undercover police officers, which means that 90% of all the undercover police will never have their identities revealed, nor the groups that they were surveying. Very often an undercover officer would have a car or a van, when not, not many people have cars. So he would always offer to take people to a demonstration or to take them home. So, you know, all as ways to find out where the protest is or where people live is very handy. They would often have jobs that would take them away for a few days at a time. And this was just to cover for the days that they would go to their real family. But surveillance of environmental activists isn't only limited to the police. The leaks from Edward Snowden reveal that the UK government has been doing this since at least 2007. I guess it's a bit like have knowing everyone's cards in a game of poker. It just gives you an upper hand in negotiating in these climate change deals. This puts developed countries like the UK and the US in a significantly better position than the poorer developing countries, who are also coincidentally the ones who are likely to suffer from the consequences of climate change. I mean, what we're calling for is very radical. What we're calling for is the biggest industrial interest in the world to basically be closed down. And that is obviously frightening if you're at the top of the current economic system or a part of this huge vested interest. We are, in a sense, their enemies. Outside of the UK, the situation seems to be even worse. Last April, a report found that in 2014, at least 116 environmental activists across the world had been murdered. One example is a Honduran activist called Berta Caceres, who was assassinated earlier this month in her home after a high-profile campaign against the burning of a dam in her local community. It seems to be part of a worldwide culture of intimidating environmental activists as a way of silencing them. Is it even justified? Statements by the security services saying there are so many um, identified uh, Islamist terrorists in the UK or potential Islamist terrorists in the UK that they can't possibly monitor them all, they can't track them all, they don't have the manpower. Um, now, assuming that's true, why are they wasting manpower on people who have always been non-violent? And why is the UK government still refusing to release information that would reveal the true extent of government surveillance on environmental activists? You could define this as a major threat, but we're more of a financial threat than a threat to life and limb. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the public would rather the police were protecting life and limb than protecting the finances of big companies. 
what we know now appears to be the very tip of what could potentially be quite a huge iceberg. Thanks for watching, uh, and if you want to leave any comments, do it underneath the video. And if you'd like to watch more videos like this, please subscribe to the News Peaks channel. The difference between metadata and data, I would make, is pretty simple. <clears throat> in, in data, what that means, I'm looking at your conversation, yeah. listening to it, or looking or reading a transcript. Uh, that gives me information about you for that period of time. So it gives me a look in depth in what you're doing at that time. Metadata gives me the view of who you're doing with all over, all the time. 